Ranger Bill, warrior of the woodland, struggling against extreme odds, traveling dangerous trails, fighting the many enemies of nature. This is the job of the guardian of the forest, Ranger Bill. Pouring rain, freezing cold, blistering heat, snow, floods, bears, rattlesnakes, mountain lions. Yes, all this in exchange for the satisfaction and pride of a job well done. If our great-grandfathers could see our country today, they'd find that there are many changes as compared to the America of yesteryear. Some of the changes are the result of necessity. These changes are dictated by circumstances beyond our control, but are a result of new industries and occupations necessary to the existence and survival of the United States. This fact has been felt even in the Forest Service, where manpower availability becomes an increasing problem with each passing year. We have more duties and fewer qualified men to carry out these duties. But let's find out what happened in the story, Petticoat Rangers. Don't look now, fellers, but I can tell you who it is by the sound of them stilts she's wearing in that sweet-smelling perfume. Boy, you're not joking, old-timer. <laughs> Hello, Jane. Hello, Bill. I don't know if I should talk to these two male animals. <laughs> <laughs> I think they only make fun, Jane. Yeah, sure we are. Uh, Janie, girl, uh, what are you going to do for excitement now that you're going back to school teaching? Do you have trouble finding excitement, Stumpy? No, but uh, we're going to kind of miss you around here. Uh, nobody to tease and poke fun at. So you finally admit that you're going to miss me, old-timer. Huh? Uh, I reckon so. You're a good sport, <laughs> Janie, girl, and uh, a first-rate fire watcher. Ah, uh, you're a sweet old gentleman, Stumpy. I think I'm going to give you a big kiss right on your sun-dried forehead. <laughs> now, see here, let's not get sentimental about this. Let's just shake hands and call it square. <laughs> oh, What's the matter, Stumpy? Oh. <laughs> You're not afraid of Jane, are you? Yeah, never you mind, young fella. That's just a token of appreciation, Stumpy. <laughs> oh, I remember how you were against me when I first came. <laughs> well, any flowery words from me you earned. And let's leave it there. Why, some of that sweet-smelling perfumes liable to jump in my clothes, and I'd be the laughing stock of the forest. Even old grizzlies would howl like they was feather tickled. <laughs> All right, <laughs> I'll just say thank you, and that's for the rest of you gentlemen too. Oh, you're welcome, Jane. You're nice people. Ah, I always think women belong in the kitchen, but now, well, maybe change mind. Uh, they're singing a little different song now, aren't they, Jane? Oh, my, yes. <laughs> I'll never forget how things were when I came to work here right after finishing school last spring. Uh, neither will I. Last spring, I was scratching myself bald, trying to figure out ways to make my man stretch enough to cover all the jobs. <laughs> Bill, what's wrong? You have a deep frown on face. You'd have a deep frown, too, my friend, if you had more jobs than men to fill them with. Ah, you speak truth there. Here, uh, just take a look. If you've ever seen a jigsaw puzzle with pieces missing, this is it. Yeah, isn't that right? Well, what you plan to do? Well, that gray wolf is a good question. Even working one man and a dog on patrol hasn't helped now. It did several years ago, but it doesn't now. Of course, the dogs do help because I'd be in an even worse spot if we didn't have them. Well, how you feel, Fire Tower Watch, now? Well, that's the pressing problem. We're just going to have to double up in our jobs during the dry months, that's all. Are the assignment sheets ready, pal? Yep. I've got them sorted for distribution. Okay. Got them on their way like a good fellow. Right. I'll be back in a little while. <laughs> There's going to be a lot of moaning and groaning when the men read these work assignments, Sonny. Yes, I expect they will, Stumpy. That has got to be done. 
I notice that you got yourself cut in for a pretty heavy load uh, besides your job as boss ranger. What makes you think the boss is an exception when the going's rough? I can't expect my man to work harder than I do. Good night. What's Bill think I'm made of? Iron? Oh, brother, I've got to stand fire watch at Eagle's Roost after I get through riding trail. Man, Biller better get me a foam rubber saddle if he expects me to inspect fire lanes 18 hours at a shot. I'd get sore about all this work. Only Bill's doing more than we are. Bill, the fellas are doing an awful lot of complaining. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> What's so funny? Oh, nothing really. I hope the fellas are tired enough now to listen to my idea to give them some relief from this terrific workload. You mean you've had an idea all along and didn't put it to work? Yeah, it's a radically new idea and I've had to wait for the right time. Will you tell me what it is? Nope, not yet, pal. But you can tell all hands to be here first thing in the morning. That is, all men that can be spared from duty. Yes, sir. I've got a notion that this is going to be something really hot. Let's come to order, men. I uh, understand you're pretty well fed up with the heavy workload, although no one has complained to me. We're not fed up, Bill. Just tired. You said it, Tom. Bill, we're plumb tuckered out. Wore down to a frazzle and a nub. They'll have to change my name from Stumpy to Stubby. <laughs> yeah. Bill, we know you're doing more work than we are. But to be truthful, we're beat. Real beat. Well, so am I, fellas. I'm glad to hear that you're good and tired. Well, 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 Bill, either you're up to something or your rough sprung leaks. You never talked like this before. <laughs> Gentlemen, I've got a radically new idea to present to you. Oh, here it comes. This is the hitch, the gimmick. Yeah, spell it, will you, Bill? Yeah, let's have it. Fellas, I'm going to hire several women as fire watchers during the dry season. Just a minute while I bang my head against the wall. My ears ain't working right. He'll be all right after his head clears. Oh, maybe not. I think he'd say he's going to have women fire watchers. Yeah, oh, that can't be. I don't know what's, <laughs> what's, 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 <laughs> what's the matter, old timer? He means it. Yeah, I don't doubt that. Can you imagine what a fire tower look and smell like with a female in it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Petticoats hanging from the tower uh, rails. Uh, oh. That sweet-smelling perfume covering the forest <laughs> oh, like <boy>. stunk gas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. All the critters in the forest will take off for the hills because they'll think it's something from another planet. <laughs> Maybe we give Bill a chance to talk now. Sure. He'd better do it now. You won't get a word in edgewise when those petticoat ragers take over. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you fellas were tired. Uh, too tired to horse this around like you are. Uh, you took the tired feeling away with those magic yeah. words of yours. <laughs> petticoat rangers. Yeah. Uh, are you really serious, Bill? Yeah. yeah. So yeah. 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 Yes, fellas, I'm really serious. And I want you to give this some serious thought. Oh, you can't mean it. Why, well, we'd be the laughing stock of the whole country. I can just see some young lady sitting in the fire tower trying to figure out where she dropped the stitch in her knitting while the forest burns to the ground. <laughs> oh, come on now, Sam. Uh, your wife isn't as dumb as that, is she? Well, no, of course not. She's smart and has a level head, but... But what? Do you think your wife is the only intelligent woman in the world? Oh, come on, fellas. Let's give in. He's got his argument all prepared like the parson's Sunday morning sermon. Give up my foot! Oh, Ned's right, old-timer. We're all dog-tired, and what's the use of kidding ourselves? I'd rather be dog-tired the rest of my life than hen-pecked by one of them female chickens uh, roosting up in a fire tower. Yeah, maybe old-timer have point there. Why should we be guinea pigs to find out? Now listen to me, fellas. <laughs> I know I 
strike you a staggering blow to your masculine pride, but let's face it. A half dozen women doing fire tower watch in the dry months would take a terrific load off of us and give us all a chance for shorter working hours and the day of rest that we need so desperately. Half a dozen women? Yep. <laughs> He's going to bring them in like bananas <laughs> in bunches so they can really give us a bad time. <laughs> I don't like this at all. Okay, fellas, that'll be all for this morning. You uh, think it over. I'll be around to talk to each one of you before the week's out. You don't have to bother with me. I'll tell you right now, the answer is no. Spell it any way you like, but it all means no. really angry about this, aren't you, Stumpy? <laughs> sure I am. Who ever heard of female women being in the Forest Service? But you'll have to admit, Bill has a point. Oh, ain't no point. I ain't for having petticoats in the fire towers. This is a man's outfit, and it takes men to get the job done. Good men. I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> Bill didn't already have some gal lined up for the job. Yeah, I figured as much. He's just shock-busting us for when she shows up. Maybe it'll work out better than you think. <laughs> That's what the bear said when he got his paw caught in a steel-jawed trap. Hello? Jane Reeves speaking. Uh, Jane, this is Bill. Oh, hello, Mr. Jefferson. How are you? Oh, fine, thank you. Only I uh, told you to call me Bill. Mr. Stump's all right some places, but not out here. All right. What's on your mind, Bill? Are you willing to give it a try, Jane? Oh, yes, I'd be thrilled to death. I've got half a dozen friends who'd like to try it, too, when you're ready. Well, I'm afraid you'll have to make the test run solo. Oh, sounds like your men are up in arms. <laughs> not quite, but almost. <laughs> they don't like the idea of petticoat rangers. <laughs> Is that what they call me? <laughs> That's it. <laughs> How do you like it? I think it's cute. <laughs> when should I report? Oh, not so fast, young lady. I haven't got their approval yet. Well, I understand. There isn't much use trying to force me down their throats. They'd only resent me all the more. All right. I'm sure it'll work out, though. Just be patient for ten days more or so, and then I'll call you. All right. Oh, I do hope they'll agree, Bill. I think it would be a wonderful experience, and, and I can take the gas. <laughs> I'm sure you can, Jane. And uh, I'll let you know as soon as possible. Goodbye. Gentlemen, uh, you know why I've called you together. Oh, sure, sure. All right. Uh, what's your answer? <clears throat> Oh, Bill, Ned, Sam, and I have been asked to speak for the group. The answer is no. Yeah. Right. Right. We agree. Yeah. No, right. still no. Yeah, right. we've talked this over considerable, and it's unanimous. Yeah, we'd rather keep on the way we're going. Right. All right. If that's your decision. I'll abide by it. You're not angry? No, of course not. Displeased? <laughs> Sam, have you got a guilty conscience? No, sir, not at all. Oh, come, you ain't got nothing to say. Your brain cells go on a strike? That's what bothers me. You've always got some final word to give. <laughs> you fellas are afraid I'm burned up, aren't you? Oh, oh, God. God. So. Well, I'm not burned up, believe me. I just wonder how long we can keep this pace up. I know I can't carry the overload too much longer. <laughs> That boss of ours is a shrewd operator. You said it. He made us feel uneasy by not blowing his top when we said no. He's slick, all right. Of course, that's what makes him the best boss ranger in the country. If he'd blown his top back there, then we'd feel justified in turning him down on this petticoat ranger business. Now you fellas know what he's up to, don't you? Sure. He's biding his time. Playing a waiting game. Man, that old Indian trick. Sometimes patience win battle when all else fails. Sure. He's waiting till we give in 
in from sheer exhaustion. I know that young whippersnapper like an know the sound of my own voice. Yeah, bless his scheming heart. <laughs> That's right. Well, the only time you'll get me to approve of female women in the Rangers is when they pat me on the chest with a spade. How'd you slash your hand so badly, Sam? Uh, with my bowie knife. I wasn't thinking about what I was doing. Your ankle's got some broken bones in it, Tom. What happened? Uh, I fell off my horse. Must have dozed off. Stumpy, you gave your head a nasty crack there. You never did this before. Nope, never did. I was just walking along and... All of a sudden, the ground flew up and hit me in the head. Sam, you're bruised from head to foot. Tangled with a bear? No, I rolled off a ridge to get away from that rattler, and it came on all of a sudden. Funny thing about that, I used to hear him rattle. This office looks like the old soldier's home. There are ten crippled men sitting in this room. Ten men that can't perform their duties as they should. Ten men subtracted from our already insufficient force. Ten men who've put an additional burden upon the remaining able-bodied men. Do you know what caused all these needless accidents? Yes, sir. Fatigue. Go to the head of the class in the Cripple Ranger's home. Since you're so intelligent thus far, Tom, perhaps you can tell me how this could have been prevented. Yes, sir. We need more manpower. Using women as fire watchers would take that duty away from the Ranger force and allow some time for rest and recreation. She'll be here first thing in the morning. <laughs> Gentlemen, it's my privilege to present to you Miss Jane Reeves. Good morning, gentlemen. I, I'm pleased to be here, and I, I hope you'll get to like me and, and like my work. Uh, Stumpy, uh, close your mouth. Huh? Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> Excuse me for leaving my tater trap hanging open, young lady. You needn't apologize, Mr. Jenkins. How do you know my name? Bill pointed you out as you were coming up the walk. I, uh, I asked him who the distinguished-looking elderly gentleman was. You asked him that? Well, yes. Why? <laughs> I thought maybe you was trying to butter me up because I'm the chief objectioner against petticoat rangers. <laughs> I think I caught all you fellas flat-footed. You didn't expect to see an attractive, intelligent, and athletic type young woman, now did you? I thought so. Well, she's here and ready to begin training. Now, you can all go back to your work. Jane will be around to see you when it comes your turn to show her your particular aspect of the ranger job. Jane, uh, will you come into the back office a minute? To... Stumpy. Uh, you stand by for orders, uh, special orders. Now, young lady, I want you to listen closely to last-minute instructions. Yes, sir. I'm going to assign the old-timer to see that you get around the whole operation. Oh, that's wonderful. I like him very much. Uh, he's a tough old grizzly, but... He's warm-hearted underneath. Oh, yes. <laughs> give you the shirt off his back if you needed it. And what's more important, he's a very fine Christian gentleman. But uh, he spoke the truth when he said he was the chief of the opposition. I hope I can change his mind. I think you will. But you'll have to prove yourself. I'll try my best. I know you will. Now, you're aware, of course, that you're under close scrutiny. Oh, yes, sir. Fine. I want you to be tough but in a feminine sort of way. Stay feminine. Yes, sir. Wear perfume. 
Even out in the forest? Yes. The men will expect you to be feminine. But you can't act helpless. Do what's within your physical limitations. The men will respect you for that. Act intelligent, but not smart alecky. And don't try to tell them what to do or how to do it. Mm -hmm. You're uh, just learning. I understand perfectly, Bill. (laughs) And uh, if you get discouraged and feel like shedding a few tears, uh, don't. Just bite your lip and ask the Lord to give you strength. A whole lot depends on you, Chang. Yes, I'm aware of that. Scared? A little. (laughs) You'll make a good petticoat ranger. We all were a little scared the first time we went out on the trail. And don't let those tough rangers of mine tell you differently. Give your horse his head always when the going's rough like this. They're better at doing it without any outside help. You try to use the lines, they'll fight you. It might cause an accident. I understand. You don't like your assignment of taking me around, do you, Stumpy? Nope. I sure don't. Why? Because this ain't no fit place for a woman. It's hard enough for a man to keep body and soul together out here without having to worry about a female woman. These trees are our friends, Jane, and we love them, each and every one of them. We watch them when they get sick or infected and nurse them back to health. We thin them out so they can have more room and air to grow big and healthy. Mm -hmm. They're our friends, too. Don't forget that when you're up in the fire tower. I'll remember every word, Sam. You better, young lady. Now let's mount up and move along. We gotta meet Bill and Gray Wolf at the fire tower at the edge of Dead Man's Gorge by dark. It's a wonderful way up here. Oh, it's so lonesome, too. Yeah, you're right, Jane. You feel plenty close to Lord up here. Sometimes rangers get very lonesome. But there are many other things to help you forget loneliness. In the morning, you see whole Shady River Valley, which stretch for 50 miles below Fire Tower. Oh, I can't wait to see it. <laughs> You'll have days and days to look at it all by yourself, Jane. This going to be my post? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Don't bite your lips so hard, Janie girl. There's a radio and a telephone up there. Oh, you're a big comfort, you old walrus. <laughs> you walrus. <laughs> <laughs> you know something, Bill? She's getting to act like a ranger already. <laughs> you soften up already, old timer. No paint. But... I'll give credit where credit's due. Jane, I think you scored a point. (laughs) Right now, we've got to get you set in the tower. You're going to leave me alone here the first night? Yes, but uh, we'll be sleeping down here in the cabin and leave in the morning. When sunrise comes, you'll look out over a hundred million dollars worth of timber and property. It's your job, young lady, to guard it against its worst enemy... I'll guard it, Bill, if it costs me my life. Jane's been up there a whole week now. Don't you think somebody ought to go visit her? You and I are going today, pal. One week of lonesome vigil at a time is enough starting out. She uh, phoned in a few things she wanted us to bring along. Yeah. Some ribbons and bows to tie on the girder, Sonny? <laughs> you die hard, don't you, old walrus? <laughs> she really put you in your place. <laughs> hey, fire tower ring. Bill speaking. Bill, there's a small flash fire in area 7 of the valley. Position 17 south, 93 west. Area 7, 17 south. 93 hey, West. That's Jane's tower. Right. What's the condition of the fire, Jane? Not much smoke. Heavy flame. Treetop and fast moving. Uh, report to me every ten minutes by radio. Let's roll, boys. We've got a hot one. (laughs) 
Bio jumpers, are you airborne? We are airborne. We are airborne. Can you read me? I read you, fire jumpers. Over and out. Jane's bill, over. Go ahead, Jane. Fire is proceeding in a southwesterly direction from Area 7. There's a small cabin on the left flank of the fire in the ridge. Can you send somebody to investigate the cabin? Yes, but it'll take two hours to get to it. It's not soon enough. The fire will be there in less time. I can see a horse tied outside the cabin. We'll go down to investigate. Repeat, we'll go down to investigate. Jane, stay out of there. Jane, do you hear me? Jane, answer me. She's gone. Stop it. You take command of the fire. Ray off and I'll leave the truck at clearing 31. We'll try to get to that cabin by copter. We too late. Fire pass over cabin now. Yeah. I don't see any signs of life down there either. Jane could escape through Tower Trail by staying close to Ridge Wall. Right. The tree growth is too thick to know if she made it or not. A pilot? Yes, sir. Drop us right behind the fire on your cable. It's pretty hot down there, sir. It'll be a lot hotter if that young lady gets killed. <coughs> Cabin ashes now. Yeah. Here. Your trail sign up. Horse going to tower trail. Yeah. <coughs> she made it then, Ray. Well, good for her. Yeah. <coughs> Come on. Let's try to catch her before she gets back to the tower. You did catch me, too, though I don't know how you did it in all that smoke and heat, Bill. Oh, it was ready to drop. Well, we're used to it, Jane. You saved a sick man's life by your courageous action. I'm making that part of your record. When you risk your life to save another, all the fellows accepted you as a ranger. They knew you had what it takes. We sure did, Janey girl. Even the old walrus here had to admit that you're a pretty good ranger. Petticoat and all. Oh, Stumpy. Can I come back next summer? Sure. And you can bring some more female women with you, too. On one condition. What's that? <laughs> They've got to be like you. Good petticoat rangers. <laughs> and that's how we started having women fire watchers in the summer months. And every year now, the ladies come back to their favorite fire towers and guard the trees when the weather's hot and dry. Well, see you next week for more adventure with... Ranger Bill! there, boys and girls. This is Ranger Bill back again for just a third of a minute with an extra word of thanks to you for joining us today. Hope you'll team up with the Rangers every week at this time when your local station gives us this chance to get together. See you then.